and you have that intro before I start speaking. Good afternoon and welcome to another health seminar organized by the Elmhurst Seventh-day Adventist Church Community Lifestyle Center. It is my great privilege one more time to welcome all of you who are watching us uh, through different, either through YouTube or Facebook or through Zoom. Uh, we are so glad that you're with us today. And at the end of the program, you're going to have opportunity to ask questions. So whether you are online, whether you're present here, there is going to be a time when Dr. Ramirez is going to be able to answer to your questions. So be ready for that. If there is any question regarding to the topic or maybe something else, you can ask those questions. So it is my great privilege one more time to welcome Dr. Eddie Ramirez. Dr. Eddie Ramirez is a research scientist he is a medical doctor, he's published author, and internationally known speaker. Uh, he's been speaking not just to the public venues, he was speaking through the, uh, uh, he was speaking on uh, NBC, uh, he was featured on NBC, Texoma, Icelandic National TV, uh, in Ecuador, and other places. Without any further, uh, we are so glad that he's with us, and uh, he's going to tell us about COVID and how to prevent, or actually, uh, your best weapon against COVID and how to sharpen it. We have the control down there. Okay, very good, let's see. Well, um, we are continuing with the series. Uh, now it's the uh, first uh, 
lecture of the afternoon, we're going to be dealing with the practical side of things. You know, yesterday, if you missed it, I recommend you go and look for that um, video on the origin of COVID. So we understood where it came from and why it came about. We were actually expecting it to happen due to the way that we treat um, uh, husbandry. And now that we have it, what can we do, number one, to prevent, number two, to potentially treat this problem? I'm going to be uh, citing an article that I wrote on COVID, and you can find that article by Googling Francisco Ramirez Research Gate. Those three words will be able to get you to the repository where I have my research. There's a Twitter account, Eddie RDMD. There's a YouTube, the R, Eddie Ramirez.com, and an Instagram also. So, what can we do against COVID? You know, the problem of this coronavirus has to do with the type of virus that it is. So, we have what is called uh, DNA viruses and we have RNA viruses. This one is an RNA virus. And then you can see that the coronaviruses are here. So you have what is called a positive and you have a negative, and there's some that are double. There's two lines of genetic code. So this one is so contagious because it's positive, as soon as it enters the cell, it is able to reproduce quite fast. And that's why it's such a contagious virus. And then when you start analyzing the protein of this virus, that in, um, you can see here that the RNA code is inside here, and then there is a fat layer around it. That's why soap is one of the best weapons against this. Because soap dissolves what? <laughs> fat. So by putting yourself your simple soap, you're able to degrade this and you literally destroy this virus. Now, one of the characteristics of coronaviruses are these spikes. These are called the spike proteins. This is the reason why coronavirus is called the coronavirus. It comes from the Latin corona, which means crown. When you put this virus on a microscope, electronic microscope, you can see these spike proteins. In fact, the famous vaccine that is around there, uh, Putin, that's exactly what we did. They took this um, um, code that is inside here, and they decoded that, and they found the code to make this spike protein. So what they did, they uh, codified that uh, part of the um, genetic code and put it in a medium so that it can go inside the body and then once it enters the body through the injection, the body absorbs that genetic code and your own body starts to make these spike proteins. Now, humans don't usually make spike proteins. So as soon as the body is making uh, spike proteins, the immune system says, wait a minute. We don't do spike proteins. What is this protein? And it recognizes that this is a, a protein that doesn't belong to the human body. And it starts creating defenses against these spike proteins. So, in the future, if you are introduced to that virus, the body immediately identifies that anything that has spike proteins is not good and goes and destroys it. That's the theory behind the, virus, the, 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 the vaccination, by the way. So then, the way that this virus infects human beings is the following. 
it's usually um, either airborne, it's floating around, or um, you can drink it, you know, or eat it. And once it enters the system, what this protein does, those spike proteins, there is a receptor in the body called the ACE2, and they connect. So think about this like a key. So this is the key, and then the key enters the right place and is able to open that door. And once it connects, then it can go inside. Now, these uh, ACE2 receptors, this very rich in your respiratory tract, and especially your lungs, have a lot of these ACE2 uh, proteins. And that's why, depending on the receptor, is how virus affects. For example, the virus of the common cold happens to affect more on the nose. That's why um, you start sneezing and the irritation and the mucus in the nose. This virus actually goes a little bit more inside than the common cold. And we were talking about this um, yesterday. So then, anytime this virus goes into a system, into a body, into an animal, the mechanism on that body that makes the proteins starts making the virus. But by doing that, you actually uh, leave some of your own genetic code on this virus. So that's why we can take that virus, decode it, and we can see where this virus has been. So in that virus, there is codes for um, different animals, such as bats, there is also codes there for something called the civet cat, and there is also genetic code there for something called the pangolin, which is an ant eater. That's how we know uh, that that virus uh, comes from, from there. So then, once the key, the spike protein, connects to the ACE2 receptor, that's a door that opens and then the cell starts to absorb the genetic code. And this genetic code goes inside your cell. Once that code goes inside, it hijacks the protein-making mechanism of your cell and starts to run the genetic code of the virus. And what is it doing? starts to make copies of the virus. So it starts to assemble them, starts to put them together, and then puts back the genetic code back on a new virus, and then your own cells become virus factories. So you start pumping out by the millions and millions this coronavirus, and that's why it's so contagious, because it starts coming up on the fluids of humans and in that way escapes and goes all over the place. Now, in order to attack this virus, we need to understand a little bit how this virus works. So, we have different stages. We have first the before stage. You were not sick at all. And then, somehow, you got exposed to the virus. So now, the virus enters your system. It takes about 5 uh, to 14 days for this virus to enter, you know, the genetic code to enter your cells and start infecting you. Once you get infected, then you're going to have either very mild symptoms, and we're going to learn why some people get very mild symptoms, or some people get very severe type of symptoms. And then usually, most people, as we're going to learn today, are going to recover, 
But unfortunately, there is a subgroup of people, I'm going to learn how not to be that subgroup of people, will end up with severe disease and they have problems uh, breathing, they have problems with their conscience, they have very severe type of fever or, or, or different other symptoms and those are the ones that are going to end up in the ICU or hospitalized and so forth. And if they're not able to overcome that, sadly, some of them are going to end up dying. So, as you can see, we said that you have the period of infection, and then statistics show the following. 80% of the people, the immune system will be strong enough to literally destroy the virus, okay? So you're going to get sick, but you're going to get better, okay? The worrisome part is the 20% of the people. 20% of the people will end up with the severe type of disease. And then those people are going to end up on a ventilator, hospitalized, and so forth. And sadly, as we said, some subgroup of them will end up dying because of the coronavirus. So you have what is called the early stage of the disease, and then you have the late stage of the disease. Now, here is something extremely important. Your immune system, that is your best weapon, what we were talking about in the title of this presentation. So, your immune system you can divide it into two parts. You have what it's called the innate immune system. This is the one that you are born with. Okay? And this is the immune system that as time goes by, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Okay? And that's why it's one of the reasons why Elderly people have a harder time with the virus because their immune system can potentially be weaker and the virus is able to overcome the, the, the system. Now, there's a second type of um, immune system, and that is what is called the adaptive immune system. This is the one, for example, that vaccinations uh, stimulate, you know, so it adapts. Um, this is the one that when you get sick, uh, then your body learns, and then next time you're not going to be sick as severe or not sick at all, because your body has defense against that. And this one actually gets stronger as you age because you see more and more diseases as you live, and the body becomes stronger. And this is something fascinating. In fact, uh, we have uh, studies that show, for example, that children that are grown in too clean of environments, that's not good for your immune system. Children are supposed to be, you know, in the dirt, plain, uh, challenging the immune system, because that's what makes that immune system stronger. In the second part of the lecture, uh, when we talk about the microbiota, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So, two very important key players here. We have what is called the monocytes, okay, in the innate system. And then we have what is called the natural killers. That's the name of that cell, or NK. Sometimes you find them under that name. And those play a very important role in this adaptive system. Now, one thing that is very important are what is called the interference. Sometimes you find them under the uh, three words, uh, IFN. And the interference are a very important protein that the immune system generates that helps to fight infections with viruses. Now, check this uh, interesting uh, study. Again, this is something we talked about yesterday. If you didn't come yesterday, let me explain to you this. Coronaviruses 
are many different types of viruses. Coronavirus is not the only one that we have right here, the, the pandemic at the moment, but there are different types of coronaviruses. Some of them are old. And in fact, the, the conspiracy theorists love this because there's things, we know about coronavirus since the 1950s. And they're saying, oh, see, they knew about the coronavirus since 1950. <laughs> yes, but it was not this one. It was a different type of virus. So you have the MERS virus, you have the SARS virus, those are coronavirus. Coronavirus is a group of viruses. Now, check on this study what we learn about the coronavirus. It says that active viral replication later results in the hyperproduction of this interference. Okay, and that brings cells of your immune system, the neutrophils and the macrophages, remember we talked about that in a minute, are a major source of pro-inflammatory cytokines. In other words, when you have an infection by a coronavirus, the body responds with interferon, because the interferon helps fight the infection. COVID-19... SARS-CoV-2 probably induces a delay of this interference and that creates a loss of the viral control in the early phase of the infection. So, this is the problem. When the person gets severe coronavirus, one of the patterns is that the body didn't generate enough interferon. So when somebody gets infected by coronavirus and didn't generate enough interferon, you most probably are going to get very severe disease. And check this out. These facts strongly indicate that which one? Innate. innate. Remember there were two, adaptive and innate. That innate immune response is a critical factor for disease outcome. In other words, if your immune system is nice and strong, it will be able to generate enough interferon. And if you generate enough interferon, if you get sick, it means the disease is going to be a milder type of disease, and then you should be able to overcome. Check this one. Interferon response is delayed. What happens when you delay the interferon response? So, severe SARS and MERS, MERS is another type of coronavirus, had higher viral loads and delayed interferon response. Thus, it could be that the patients most susceptible to severe disease are those that cannot mount an effective early antiviral immune response. So you can find that pattern. People with weaker immune systems are not able to generate enough interference which make the virus able to reproduce more and more and more and more and you overcome the system. Type 1 and 2 interference responses were the highest in patients with mild to moderate disease and were low in patients with severe or critical disease. Can you see the pattern here? So in fact, um, right now we're actually doing a scientific study on this. So we have patients with COVID, we're measuring blood tests, and then we're measuring the interferon on those patients. And then we give hydrotherapy, and we are demonstrating that hydrotherapy helps stimulate interferon in the body. So, would it be a good idea to do hydrotherapy? <laughs> Everybody should be doing some form of hydrotherapy because this increases the interference in the body. Patients with more severe disease had less type 1 interferon activity in their blood. And the studies are very clear. This is not just one study, but the pattern of the studies show that 
when there is less interference, the smaller, you get more severe disease. So you need to make sure that interference is nice and high. So over and over and over, the studies are showing that. So what are we learning here? We're learning that SARS has many possible weapons that it uses. And some of the proteins that the SARS virus generates will block the interferon response. So, if there is less interferon, there is more severe disease. And this is what happens. The reason why some people end up even damaging their lungs and so forth. Have you seen some of those studies, you know, in the news, how some people have this severe type of, of damage in their lungs? That has to do with the following fact. Those people, early in the disease, low level of interferon. And then as the disease progress, then suddenly the immune system creates what is called a cytokine storm. You think that's good? <laughs> no, it's not good. The body is going haywire and it's overreacting and the immune system is going crazy and it goes and damages the lungs. For example, this one is a, um, a CAT scan and what you're seeing, you're seeing the lungs. Imagine that you cut the person in half where the lungs are. Do you see these white things here? Those are not supposed to be there. Trust me on that one. <laughs> Those are damage that are caused by our own immune system as it goes crazy, starts attacking to the right and the left. Not only lungs can be damaged, the brain can be damaged, the, the liver can be damaged, the gallbladder can be damaged, and many possible organs can be damaged as a result of that overactive active immune system. And that's what actually end up damaging the person and some of them are going to end up dying. Now, there are some tools that are used at the level of the hospital when somebody has disease, and those things include the rem remdesivir and the dexamethasone and the plasma from people that had the disease. You are, in theory, bringing some of those antibodies in order to attack that virus. So these are three things that are showing some benefit, but this is something that is done once the disease took place, and you need a doctor to help you with this. Why don't we focus rather into try to change these statistics so that not only 80% can improve, if we're able to help that 85% improve or 90% improve, these would make phenomenal uh, improvement on the number of people that are dying, it would decrease very much. Now, sadly, some of the guidelines for prevention of the, of the coronavirus are good. You know, the social distance and the mask and all these things, those are, those are good things. But unfortunately, I don't hear pro, uh, promoting these other things that can potentially improve the innate immune system. In my opinion, we should be putting a big emphasis on those things because those things, at the end of the day, are what are going to move this 80% so that it becomes an 85, a 90, a 95. It would be phenomenal if we could move those statistics like that. So, we want to to do things to be able to improve the early phase of the disease in a safe way. So let's see a few things that we can do about that. We have one thing that is very important, and that is vitamin D. Your immune system is dependent on vitamin D. This is the guideline. If you live above San Francisco, you don't get enough vitamin D, period. No, this is non-negotiable, okay? So if you live in Chicago, you don't get enough vitamin D throughout the year. You need to take vitamin D. There's no question about that. Even myself, you know, I like to go and run in the midday and expose myself in the, in the summer days. I even measured my vitamin D, and my vitamin D was low. 
Even though I go out, you know, and I'm running, you know, 45 minutes an hour in the, in the sunlight throughout the summer, that was not enough. Because our ancestors used to be outside working hours and hours in the fields. You know, our ancestors were working in agriculture. They got enough vitamin D, but not us. We spend too much time inside buildings. So we need to supplement with vitamin D. How much? Depends where you're at. So it's a very good idea to go to your doctor and ask them, what is my level of vitamin D? As a doctor, I cannot see you in my eyes and tell you, oh, your vitamin D is such and such. I cannot. It's impossible. You need a blood test. That's what's going to tell you what your vitamin D is. If in the meanwhile you want to play it safe, start taking 5,000 to 10,000 units, but it may not be enough. If you are too low, you're going to need the prescription strength 50,000 units in order to raise that vitamin D. So watch out for that. So studies show very well how vitamin D is directly related to severe disease. So the lower the vitamin D, the higher the probability the person is going to end up with severe disease because it affects the immune system, and the immune system cannot secrete the interference that we're talking about, and you end up with severe disease like that. So very clear the, the patterns, even at the uh, epidemiological level, places that culturally take more vitamin D and have higher levels of vitamin D, happen to have lower mortality, less people die of COVID compared to people that have um, less levels of vitamin D. Those are the people that are going to end up with a severe type of disease. And this is something very clearly documented. Another thing that you can do is to expose yourself to eucalyptus. Eucalyptus oil has the ability to stimulate uh, what type of your immune system? What does it say there? And what do we say? <laughs> the innate immune system is directly related to your possibility to control the virus in the early stage, or if it's weak, it's going to go severe. So by exposing yourself to eucalyptus oil, you can stimulate your immune system. And there's plenty of research about this. Overall, our data demonstrating that eucalyptus essential oil from Eucalyptus Globus is able to implement the innate cell-mediated immune response. So that's exactly what you need. You want to have that innate system nice and strong. So you can get some of these uh, essential oils for eucalyptus. Be careful if you take too much, this can be toxic. One way of benefiting from this would be in a place like a sauna or um, a steam bath. Uh, you can add, you know, some of these drops and breathe that. That is fantastic for your immune system. Also, there's some fascinating research coming out from Japan that shows that just walking in a place that there is eucalyptus, you get the benefit. Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> So you don't necessarily need to take it if you're able to walk in a place that there is eucalyptus. And also pine trees also have that effect. And that's what they call it forest bathing. In Japan, is something very common. And basically what they did, they uh, put people to walk in the forest. They took multiple blood tests and they demonstrated that that stimulated your natural killer cells. Is that good or bad? <laughs> good. It means your immune system is more tuned up to destroy this virus, and the NK cells are able to um, do their job much better. 
and sleep. We talked about that this morning. I hope you didn't miss that, that lecture. But sleep is so good because your, your immune system is dependent on sleep. If you don't sleep enough, your immune system happens to be lower. So in this um, study, they were showing that people that receive vaccination, the vaccination doesn't work very good on people that are sleep deprived. Because the body is not a, the immune system is not able to function properly and is not able to create those antibodies. So the most important sleep is what is called the delta sleep, which is the nice and deep sleep. It is the one that if they wake you up, you're all confused. You don't even know where you're at. Okay? It is the type of sleep that if you wake up, you're not going to be dreaming. Okay, because it's such a deep, that's the type of sleep that will be able to repair the immune system the better. So it is actually during the first third of the night that we experience the deepest part of our sleep. This, sleep, this deep or slow wave sleep is the most restorative part of our sleep. And this takes place, notice this, before midnight. That's why you should be going to bed at 9 p.m. or 9.30. If you're going to bed later than that, you are missing this deep sleep so your body is not able to recover as well. And don't tell me, well, doctor, it's because, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a late owl. You know, I function better in the evenings and, and blah, blah, blah. That's not true. Very interesting study they did. They took these night owls and they put them on a tent okay, to sleep there. And you know, when you're going camping and on a tent, I mean, you can only do so many things in the evening and you have to go to bed. There's not too many things to do there, you know. So they converted every single one of those night owls into morning people in a couple of days by putting them in a place where they were obliged to go early to sleep. That um, type of sleep is the one that helps with memory consolidation. So that's why if you have tests and things, that's the thing to do so that your brain is able to work much better and you're able to learn much better. That's the one that is related to more alertness on the next day. And also is the one that helps keep your body and brain in optimal health. And finally, another thing that we can do to stimulate our immune system and be able to stimulate the generation of um, those interference is hydrotherapy. In this uh, study, this is not mine, but this is another one, what they were showing is that when you do hydrotherapy, hydrotherapy is when you expose yourself to a change of temperatures. Let's say you go to a sauna and then follow by a cold shower. You know, that stimulates the immune system very much. Or is when you are um, in a shower, you put hot water, three to five minutes, and then cold water from 30, to one, 30 seconds to one minute, and you do these changes two, three, five times, that stimulates what are called the shock proteins, and studies show that that stimulates very much your immune system. By artificially creating a fever, you stimulate what it says here, activates what? The monocytes. Remember, we saw in those in our, in our chart at the very beginning, part of your innate immune system. So those monocytes activated will be related to less severe COVID if you end up with COVID. And then this is a, an, another exercise. Notice how when the people were exposed 
to hot and cold. Notice what happened to the NK cells, which are part of the adaptive system. Notice how they started improving. Notice the lymphocytes, how they also started improving. In fact, the bigger the shock, the better the uh, activation of those immune cells. And this one, this study, it was showing how hyperthermia in humans enhances what? What's this there? Interference. Is that good or bad? <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? What we said at the very beginning, how severe COVID is directly related to low levels of interference. So, by doing hydrotherapy, you're able to stimulate your immune system to generate more interference. And notice here, the warmer the body got, the more interference it generated. Good or bad? <laughs> Good. So by doing this exercise, this is something fabulous. And you know, this is something I reported on the article that I published on hydrotherapy. How countries such as Estonia and Finland, sauna for them is part of their culture. Everybody there does sauna every week. And you find that in Finland and Estonia, they had some of the lowest mortality for COVID in all Europe. Okay? So, this is my article. You can find it there on the, on the research gate. And what we are documenting here on this article is that hydrotherapy, or also called hydrothermotherapy, is the same thing. Um, the hydrotherapy will tune up your immune system and help you improve your immune system. So if you end up catching the, um, the COVID, it's going to be more of a mild disease rather than a severe type. So what we have learned um, this afternoon, number one, is that vitamin D has an impact on our immunity. And if we can stimulate our immunity, that will be related to decreased mortality of COVID. We also learned that natural substances such as essential oils can help impact our immunity. We also learn that sleep has a major impact on our immunity. And finally, hydrotherapy, the hot and cold, improves our immunity to stimulate our innate immune system that will be related to severe or mild COVID, depending how we treat it. So make sure that you don't do things that are against your immunity. For example, going against your conscience decreases your immunity. That's why whatever you know is correct, you need to do those things because if you go against those things, your immune system is affected. Make sure you avoid immunosuppressants such as sugar. Sugar decreases your immune response. And um, this is, these are very well-published studies. You get people, they drink a, a normal-sized soda, and then you take their blood, and then you put that blood against bacteria, and then you count how many bacteria that blood uh, immune system can kill. And you will see the very clear relationship, the more sugar, the more um, decrease of immunity. And uh, how much sugar is there? Every 100 milliliters of soda has 2.2 tablespoons of sugar. So that means the average uh, soda has um, 13 tablespoons of sugar. I mean, that's a lot of sugar, you know, that, that, and that creates an immunosuppressant. So beware of those things. So as you can see, there are things that we can practically do regarding COVID. I, would, I wish the authorities were promoting these things, you know, <laughs> because this is what people need to be uh, doing if we want to move the curve into a more 
positive side of things. So we're going to have a little um, break, and then we'll continue with the next part. Are you going to be able to answer to a couple of questions, maybe now, because we are receiving questions, and sure. the rest of the questions we will entertain at the end of the program. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to let the live, I mean, the online audience that we are going to take a break of five minutes. We just need to reset a few things, and please be patient and wait for us, and we'll be back after the questions, those five minutes. Now, let me just ask you a couple of questions that they came, I don't know if you can answer quickly or not. First one was, would you take any of the current vaccines? And then the next question <laughs> is, which one? Yes, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> in my opinion, a little bit too early. Uh, we're still analyzing the data. So, uh, I mean, this vaccination, they started last week, you know. So, in my opinion, a little bit too early. So we need to see a little bit more of the data, which one is the most effective, which one has the most uh, um, side effects and so forth. So that's the one that you want to try to avoid. So, yeah, I would have to wait a little bit to see a little bit more of the data in my personal uh, opinion. Okay. okay, okay, that was personal. Now, one more. Can you add eucalyptus oil to your humidifier? Yes, you can, water. and it's a good idea to so have that around the atmosphere there where you are, and by breathing that, you're stimulating. Just be careful, don't use too much, because as I mentioned, it can be toxic, so be careful. Okay, should we go one more now, mm -hmm. and then later on? Yes, uh, question, what is the reason why not to exercise between three hours before sleep? Because you end up um, stimulating the body so your body thinks that it's not time to rest but rather time to be active. The brain gets active and so forth. So it's not the most ideal thing to do. You know? So in fact, the best, best time would be before breakfast if you want to ask the, you know, the ideal time to have uh, the, the exercise. And, and one more, can altitude make COVID-19 infection worse? Uh, altitude. Altitude? It's, yeah, that's what it's Well, asking. both, attitude and altitude. <laughs> 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 if the attitude is, is of altitude. fear, <laughs> be careful. Fear uh, immune suppresses you. You shouldn't be, you know, all this fearful and, 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 and so forth. I suggest you go and, and listen to the lecture I gave later today, um, that is called um, heal your uh, life by healing your mind. You know, we're talking a little bit about the stress, how to handle that stress more healthily. That's the attitude part. Now, the altitude, <laughs> it would depend on how severe the change was. If you live already in high altitude or low altitude, no problem. Your body is adapted. But if you are in the process of changing that um, High, from low altitude to high altitude, you are in a little time frame of adaptation, and then you're a little bit more vulnerable for a few days. Okay. okay. And maybe one that is related quickly to this. Can it uh, um, actually bother us? How can we use the eucalyptus oil if we don't have access to sun or steam bath? That's right. Yeah. You and can... the, the follow-up is... Mm -hmm. is can it be used with food or drink in small amounts, or should it only be inhaled? There is a type that you can actually drink it. So you just put you know, one or two of those uh, drops, and you, you drink that once a, once a day or so. And um, another uh, way that you can do that, very simple, you put a couple of drops on a... Um, a pan that is boiling, and then you put a towel over your head, and as you breathe that, that's phenomenal because it goes all the way inside your lungs. In fact, it makes your skin nice, nice and soft, okay? And then um, uh, followed by a little um, cloth with um, cold water, and then you just rinse your whole face like that. That's the way. Thank you. 
Thank okay. you very much. We are going to have a break now, five minutes, and we'll be back. Those of you who are watching us online, stay tuned. We'll be back in five minutes. Thank you. I just, just my be content, my, my Lord. Say, just, just could be soul. content, my Lord, Lord. Oh, until life on my Lord, until life on my Lord, until life on my Lord, until life on my Lord. No, if it is after sixteen years. Sometimes, that's the problem. <laughs> All right. I just want to say to you, there is another group that is supposed to come and sing. Uh, they did not give me the name. It's ready. Eh, 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 eh. Come, come, come here to the front. Eh, eh, come to the front, come to the front, come to, come to the front. Eh, eh. Brother who is going to be using uh, an instrument here. I don't know where is the brother. Where is the brother with the instrument? Where? That's my brother. With the instrument, it's you. Okay. Let me just wait for, for these guys to be able to give us a song. Are you still looking for someone? Else? Okay. You are ready? Okay. say amen all right we are going to have our brother who is going to be using his um, his instrument to sing and then after that we are going to sing a song that I'm going to ask you to to sing it in um, in Setswana in Shona in that's hymn number 35 but hymn number 35 you are going to allow me to sing it the way I want to sing it. Everyone is allowed to sing it the way he wants, but we are going to sing together. All right? Where is my brother? My brother? Here you are. Um, good afternoon. Uh, please allow me to sit down. I have a little bit of a stage fright. I tend to close my eyes so I do not want to fall down. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, before we can we can come to number 35. Let's start off with number 132. Then we'll go back, we'll go back to number 35. Okay, let's start with your number 132. I don't know whether this thing is it working. Is this thing going on? to sing the songs slowly but I'd want us to clearly hear the words of the songs Jesu kine mukorong to Jesu Before we can um, go very far away with our with our program, I've just been asked to some to say some of the testimonies of what the Lord has done, um, and I hope you can still be able to bear with me. Are you not tired now? Okay. Let me just tell you this. This is what happened. In the morning, I think I told you about um, the fact that um, to stay in Romania when you are not employed and you are just um, talking to God to solve all the problems 
for the normal people it is strange for me it is part of life there is something that I've discovered about what God says about um, his work that has to be done I've just made a decision to say that um, I, I'm just going to do God's work no matter what happens and I do not tell the people my problem until the problem is solved being a missionary you know, you know there is something that I never wanted to become I've never wanted to become a full time missionary that sounds funny I'm a teacher I wanted to do part time missionary work part time uh, my own work but the Lord has placed me in a place whereby I have to do the work full time and without waiting for the end of the month you wait for the end of the day <laughs> you get what I'm talking about why is because for you to eat that day you need to make sure that God has done that work to such an extent that you have that food on the table but just to cut that long story short I don't even have not even one day when I can say that I slept on an empty stomach that has never happened my children are going to school they need school fees they need everything I mean to be putting on their their attire different attires for the winter and also for for um, um, for the summer but the Lord has been taking care of us I just left you in the morning just talking about the fact that uh, we received the house that we finally did not receive you remember what I told you you were still here right and then I decided you know I am going to be able to continue doing God's work but then one of these days that was now 2007 2007 I'm still running Bible teaching in this medical missionary school Hegelia, very beautiful good people who are there and I'm still paying rent every month but without a salary not even knowing where I'm going to get the following salary from but I was still paying rent I don't remember them coming to me to say you know what you are now overdue Over, overdue is that is that all right okay you know some there we don't speak English we speak Romanian okay so all the time the Lord will just be able to make work out his miracle now this one is whereby in 2007 I was called by a certain friend who said look here there is a prophet who has risen among us okay where is this prophet it's a lady she stays outside the city dressing she dresses very well the food vegetarian if not vegan I mean all the things that you could talk about what you would say oh look here this one is a good Christian she was and then they said okay please can you come she has prophesied and some people some of her prophecies have already come true can you please come and see her I said okay that's 2007 I went to the place it was about four, four kilometers just going straight from the main road going straight into the into the um, uh, into the forest in the place where she stays I went to, I go to the place I mean it poured down rain we went there we were soaked just like chickens when we got to the place very very soaked and when we got to the place this lady we are talking um, oh by the way I forgot to tell you that that was an Adventist lady okay so it's not like um, any other person I'm talking about an Adventist lady so we got to the place when we got to the place this lady says okay um do you want food we said no we don't want food we first of all want to know um uh, who you are and what you are doing and everything and then she started prophesying about me you know that's a problem if you go looking for them they prophesy you <laughs> and so they said ah you know what i was talking to god about you uh -huh. and then what is it that happened it says that god told me go back to because uh, if you don't go back to Africa now, you are going to be like Naomi who is going to be uh, coming, I mean, coming from that other land where she went and you will be having nothing. I said, ah, but, but God told me to come here to Romania. Now, how come he has not yet told me? Anyway, if God has told you that, let him also come and tell me the same thing. And then that's okay. Then she went on to speak and she said, look here, in this month, 
I mean, in this year, 2007, there is going to be, uh, the Sunday law is going to be given. And then 2010, that is going to be the close of probation. 2014, Jesus Christ is going to come back. So I said, uh, remember, that was, now you know it was not true. But don't forget, that was 2007. And so I said, um, but my sister, the Bible says that no one knows the day or the hour. You remember the kids? Hello, hello. You remember that? Right? The kids know what I'm talking about. That They know that no one knows the day or the hour. So I also, like the little children, I asked, but you know, the Bible says that no one knows the day or the hour. And then the Lord said, yeah, no one knows the day or the hour, but you can be able to know the year. <laughs> because I started thinking, okay, yeah, the Bible does not say no one knows the year. It says no one knows the day or the hour. Okay. okay. So after after speaking sometimes, so I said, okay, fine. Now, uh, so what is it? So she said, look here, where I am here. Do you see this chair where I'm sitting? I said, yes. Says, here comes, there is a man who comes here. And he sits right here. I cannot see his face. And he dictates to me everything that I have got to be writing about these final events. And this is where I got the information from. Now, what do I say? You are lying? I can't say that. Because she's showing me the chair. I mean, what do I say? It's the truth, but my heart does not believe that. So I said, ah, okay, my sister. So what you are going to do is that I'm going to pray for you. And he says, be quick, make a decision, and go back to Africa. In the same time, I receive a call from Botswana telling me, Grish, what are you still doing? Are you still in the Adventist church? Go out of that church, because that church is going to burn. At the same time, within the very same time, another church is calling me. He's saying, hey, what are you doing in the Adventist church? May you move out of that Adventist church. Come to our church. Within the same time comes somebody who phones from America who says, hey, you know what? I've heard about you in Spain. I've heard about you in America. I've heard about you in Romania. Hey, please, I want to come and see you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All these corners were targeted exactly on me I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed I prayed, I prayed, I fasted, I prayed and then the Lord started revealing the things very interesting in a very interesting way the way he was revealing was not like I was in a vision no, not even in a dream, no he just had to show the things straight from the Bible and the spiritual prophecy the brother who called me to go and see that sister he just called me and said okay Godfrey, can you come and, and, and let's hear, what, what does the Lord say about this? I said, ah, unfortunately, this lady is not a prophet. And so he said, what shall we do? I said, let's go back to her. And he said, no, 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 let's call her to come. I said, okay, fine. So she came. And then when she came, she said that she was very happy. And she said, okay, fine. So what if we find out? And then I said, um, unfortunately, my sister, you are not a prophet. And she says, but you know what? The Lord has already shown me something about you. Okay, please stop. Why? is because the way you are prophesying is not even biblical. He says, but I'm not the one who just, I mean, I, somebody talks to me and I said, please, when that figure comes back again, you should tell that figure, get thee behind me, Satan. Because that's not the Lord. The Lord has said, no one knows the day or the hour. That's number one. Number two, no one can be able to say that Jesus Christ is coming in two or in three or in five or in ten or even in twenty years to come. But you even know that Jesus Christ is coming in 2014? That's not true. To cut that long story short, I mean, she was not happy with me. Of course, we prayed and then from then on she had to go her way. Um, I know the children, uh, they suffered quite a lot. He's, I mean, the, the children of this family. Finally, she just went somehow like crazy after some time and um, things did not go out very well. 2014 came and went by. Children were now found in the hospital. You see, all I'm simply trying to say is this. The devil, when you are doing God's work, the devil is not going to relax. No. He's just going to make sure that he can come your way and try by all means to pull you. Can you imagine? I was being pulled in every direction. And I'm sure the devil had just decided to say, you know what, this guy, if he does not fall on this side, he will fall on this side. If he does not fall on this side, then on that other side, he's going to be able to fall. And praise be to God, the Lord has still continued to be keeping us alive with the whole family. 
I would almost to there, there is there are those sisters who are there who are supposed to come and sing. You are the one, right? Right. Please, can you come and sing? I just want to say to you, one of the most important things that we can be able to do is this: stay closer to God. Amen. Just stay closer to God, and you see that God Himself, whatever He has promised, that He is going to do, that's what He is going to do. Okay. So we are going to let um, my sister come and sing. And then we are going to be singing Dom um, Nuyabun, uh, but this one we are going to sing it a cappella, the Romanian one. We'll sing it a cappella, and I'm going to be the one who is going to be taking the video, but I'm not singing. It's you who are singing. Okay. Right. Come, my sister. Amen. Yes, my sister. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Okay. So, Dom Nuyebun. Can you see this? Dom Nuyebun. Hey, please, don't embarrass me when you are singing Romanian. Sing very well. <laughs> okay, we are putting it closer. Can you see that? Okay, let's just try it as the sister is preparing herself. Let's go to Domnu Yem. Okay. 
Yeah, that's good. But don't forget Kate, Kate. It's Kate. Okay, Kate. Okay. Don't do your Okay, two.
You know, some of these things, this, this, some of these things is just to see. You see the person and you see the thing. You wonder. <laughs> How did they manage to connect themselves <laughs> so that they can come out music out of it? <laughs> I think only when we get to heaven, we'll understand much better. When we also, my sister, I'm going to sing better than you. We get to heaven, wait and see. <laughs> All right. We, we, we are going to be able to have, there is an, another brother who was supposed to be coming here. But let's first of all finish up with the Romanians and then from then on, we, we, we go ahead with our... With our um, um, with our music, let's go to Dom Nu Yebun. Dom Nu Yebun. Hey, can we can we sing can we sing with power? Dom Nu Yebun. Okay, Dom Nu Yebun. Boys, um, Tepi, you can you can now. Okay, now you get the, the... I'm not too sure if I'll be able to get shot. I know, I know you do. Okay. Pebrato. Dom nu ye boon. And let's, let's just sing together. Dom nu ye boon. And then you... Dom nu... Two. Dom nu... Remember, I'm going to be put, if you see it on the internet, you should know it has come from. If you find it on what is known as Christ Our Hope 1844, you should know we are going to throw it there. I'm going to double check and just see how it has come out. All right, let's sing. Tine huka matine kufara kuhutsa mira muma woko ake. Do you know that song? All right, that's number 35. So I just wanted to, I mean, I, I've told you we are just going to sing this one a cappella, and I want us to, please, let's, let's just sing. My brother, don't forget this one also. All right. Now this one, I can be inside here. This is not Romanian. Okay, are you there, number 35? Just open number 35. And we are going to sing together exactly as it is there. Where did I put my hymn now? I can't see it now. Oh, is this mine? It's yours. I don't know where I put mine. Check that one in. Ah, it's here. Look at this. Okay. Number 35. Abu Talano. But please sing it in Sichuana succinctly. And then I'm going to sing it also in a very good way also as we sing together. Okay. Abu Talano 2. 
together. singing alto who are singing alto okay allow me allow me just to, to ask you to do this i hope that we don't have uh, musical teachers here when we come to this one when it comes straight to the refrain i just want to hear 
And all of us, we sing the normal way. Okay, I'll tell you, I just want to hear. Okay, okay, now we are starting again. Number one, and then we go to the to the chorus. Okay. South Africa. Tell me the story of Jesus. Ride on my heart everywhere. Tell me story most precious sweet as the devil was heard tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcome his birth Say. 
good tidings to end. Tell me the story of Jesus. Right on my heart everywhere. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, weeping in anguish and pain. Even again, loving that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay. brethren you know there is something that is just interesting about music music no matter where you are you just enjoy it <laughs> amen and if there's something that i i just want you to be remembering is that wherever you are keep a song in your heart amen wherever you are keep a song in your heart take time to talk to god and take time to sing for the lord after four years of staying in um in um in the medical missionary school, I had to go outside the place into the real village. Now I was speaking English in my place. Now I got into this area where no more English. You have got to speak Romanian, Romanian, Romanian. So I got into this area, but don't forget my problem was still the same one. How do you go to rent in the village with no money and with no salary? I got to the place. Somehow, when I was looking for the place, I said, after, when I was tired, I simply said to the Lord, Lord, I'm now tired. And you know exactly where I'm supposed to be. May you show me where I'm supposed to go? The next stop where I go to, people directed me to a place whereby one missionary was, had come home after three years, just for a very short time. And I got to the place, and they said, okay, you are going to be staying here with your family. But before, I mean, when they said you can come to our place to stay, there was a question, okay, how much do we pay for rent? 
and they said no money for rent. So for how long are we going to stay there? Then they said until Jesus Christ comes. I mean, here is now me with my whole tribe, you know, because it was no longer it was me, my wife, my my two children plus another one that came. I think plus another one again. I think we are now a team of about I mean four four plus one plus one. That's six, right? Okay, right. We got to this place, and now we are in this area, and um. There are two old people who are there. The one who was now the grandfather for my children and the other one was now the grandmother for my children. Something interesting is that these old elderly people were now coming to our house, which was in their yard. And so they would come there, they would pick up my little children, they are very small, and they would put them right here on their shoulders. And they'll begin to run around the house together with them. Just running around. And the kids would be laughing. They'll be saying, they'll be saying, Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandpa. In, Ro in Romanian, they say, Bunico, 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 Bunica, Buni, Bunico. You see, it's just like saying, okay, Grandmother, Grandfather, Grandmother, Grandfather. So they were busy running around, running around. And um, before he could put down the one, another child was saying, no, I also want to come there. So they were just like that. And then this, uh, the third boy was simply saying, hey, I am going to Africa with Buniku and we are going to be riding a motorbike. You see, so they were that, so we, the Lord gave us including the parents for the children not to miss that part of great parents. I'm saying this to you so that you may understand that, you know, when God does these things, he does these things to, until, until the end. And so, during that time, now the problem was this. Lord, we have stayed in this place two years, three months. We need to move. Somebody picks up, picked us up and we stayed in his place. And, and meanwhile, meanwhile, when we are speaking this time, we simply went to the Lord and said, Lord, Lord, please help us, Lord, to go out. I mean, just help us, Lord, to find our own place. In fact, our prayer was this. Lord, are you telling us that, um, five minutes? Are you telling us that uh, in this time, um, Lord, we are not going to have a time whereby our children will at least pick up some flowers that they are going to say, these ones are our flowers? Lord, please, we want a house. So when we are busy talking to God, we would go to pray with the kids outside in the forest. When we were in the, inside the forest, I remember I was talking to, to my kids. It was in the night. It was moonlit. And then we were looking at the moon and it was in the night. And I was explaining about how Jesus Christ was coming back, was going to come back again. And when I was explaining this and I was describing this, I think it was so vivid in my girl that, I mean, before I could finish up, I mean, when I was still talking about, about the coming of Jesus Christ, she just looked up and she said, Hey, Jesus Christ, come back. I mean, to hear it was like, you know, wh why is he delaying in coming? Let, let him now come down so that at least we can go to that place that has been described. But to cut that long story short, an old man just came in the area when I was busy running an evangelistic meeting and he, see, he phoned me and said, Godfrey, you now have a property in, 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 in Romania. He said, what is it? He had brought a land. I mean, he had just bought a land land about 1,100 square meters uh, in that place. So he said, okay, fine. This is the area. They finished up with another man. So I said, okay, fine. Thank you very much. So I'm saying, Lord, are you telling me that I'm going to be in Romania for a longer time? And um, of course, as usual, the Lord does not quickly answer. And so I simply had to leave this and I, I just went about and I, I went, went for the working out of, of the material that was needed and also all the, all the things that were needed by the government. I did, I did all that. What was left was that I did not have any money in my pocket and I had never built before. And I did not even know how much it would cost to build a house. Praise the Lord that I did not know. Because if I knew what it was, I wasn't even going to do anything. So I, I just brought a friend. A friend just, uh, he just had to go and put some, uh, what do you call it, this um, 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 whitewash. Just, just to be able to put the lines for where the house was supposed to be built. And then from then on, I did not even tell even the church that I was building a house. Because the next question was going to be, okay, you are building the house. I mean, how much money do you have? And then I will say, I don't have money. Then that does not make sense. So I simply said, I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm going to keep quiet. I simply said, boys, we don't have money, but we have muscles. So we are digging. 
So he started just digging the foundation. We have never built before. Started digging the foundation. We are digging. And so their friends would come, they would help digging, and they would go. When they were tired, then we would continue digging. And my one of the friends just came with a with an excavator, and then he came to dig the to dig the bench, and then from then on he went away after about three days. And then we continued digging. Some friend just came and he said, Ah, you got free, what are you doing? I said, I'm building a house. <laughs> you know, this guy was a, was, a, was a manager for a company. He came with a wheelbarrow and he was, he was busy shouting, hey, we are building a house for Godfrey. And he was just busy running around. I mean, I mean just doing, I said, this is very funny. After some few days, the, the, one of the, the old man who bought the area, he just asked, Godfrey, what are you doing? I said, I'm building a house. He said, do you have a constructor? I said, no. He said, Godfrey, I'm trying to make some shakes from Africa. What are you trying to do? I said, I, I'm just building a house. So what he did is that he said, okay, fine. I woke up one day just with about seven people right there at the, at the place with, with the truck. We were saying, oh, we have been sent to come and help in the building. Okay, who we'll send you? I did not even ask. So I simply asked the, I simply asked the question, hey, okay, when they came, I showed them where to sleep, where they could be able to get their food, and then from then on, we said, okay, fine, we are, we are going to continue to constructing the, co constructing the house. And the next thing is that, what happened is that they came, um, 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 what, that guy, we had actually put the lines for the house. He said, you know, I'm remaining with about seven, I have about 700 bricks that have remained where I was building. So, please, can I, uh, do you want them? I said, what? What are you talking about? So, I just went and picked up the truck. I went and picked up those 700 bricks. I put them there. They said, okay, fine. But, uh, they said, okay. I simply said, okay, fine. Now, we are going to be able to uh, start building. Another one simply said, you know, we have got some, some bricks for the foundation. We picked those bricks. We put them there. And now, the work started. Some people just started phoning. We heard you are building. So they would send. So would give the first and the second tithe, and then would buy the material. Now the builders were there. Just to cut the long story short, it took about eight months with no money. I did not even know who told these people that I was building, because I never told anyone, except for these two men. I never told anyone. And these people were falling from all directions. In eight months, the house was there. Just to, to tell you the truth, today as I'm speaking, I'm actually coming from my own house, which I do not owe anyone. The Lord has done that, and now there are even some people who have now decided to at least sponsor the work that I'm just doing. I'm simply saying that God himself is able to do and work out some miracles. My brothers and my sisters, I hope I did not, um, what can I say, disturb you by my testimonies. I don't normally tell the people my testimonies. But here I can tell because after I've spoken to you, I'm gone. You'll never see me again. So whatever you're going to be saying, you say it when I'm not going to be there. But all I would want you to do is this. Just be encouraged that God is still God. He has never changed. Shall we kneel down for prayer? Our Father and our God, we humble ourselves before you. And thank you, our Father, for allowing us to come and gather together in this fashion. We are so thankful, Lord, because your love that you have shown towards us is the love that only you, God, can be able to give. Be with us, Lord, as we are now retiring to our different places of stay. We are asking in a special way, Lord, that all the testimonies that we have been talking about, the music that the people have been listening to, and the joy that we have been having, we have been having and the peace that we had together, Lord, May this remain stored in our hearts. And may we be prepared to meet you when you shall come. Help us, Lord, to become missionaries wherever we are. Part-time, half-time, full-time missionaries. But allow us, Lord, to spend our time with you. Bless these families. There are some who are still struggling, who are still struggling, who are looking for your help. Lord, I know you have a thousand ways of providing. Help us, Lord, to hold on to you in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.